Hi there, I'm Dr. Francesca Zampollo and as you know I talk about food design. In this video I want to talk to you about a product that will allow us to grow food cells at home. Before we get into that, I want to remind you that if you're interested in food creativity and food design thinking, uh, you can check out one of my books or one of my courses. All the links are in the description below or you can check foodsignthinking.org. To talk about this uh, wonderful uh, um, innovation, discovery thing, we are going to have a look at this article from Smith smithsonian.com. In the future, will we be growing fruit in home bioreactors? Question mark. A team of molecular biologists want you to forget about strawberries and instead take cell gem for a whirl. And this is the product itself. It's called CellPod, if I am correct. I'm going to read a little bit about it. Um, so, Lori Reuter, definitely not pronouncing this correctly, apologize, and his colleagues at the state run tech company VTT Technical Research Center of Finland uh, started working on a project that totally reimagines how we think of growing food. The idea got started when Reut Reuter, Reuter um, started working in a VTT lab that cultivate, cultivates plant cells lines for industrial use in things like cosmetics and medicine and then basically he found out that other other colleagues were using uh, berries and multiplying fruit cells so he asked them how do they taste like and they replied we don't know we are not allowed to uh, eat anything in the lab so Reuters team had a new idea what if we what if plant cells could be grown for food by regular people working outside the lab they started the project using some of the berry cell cultures from the lab, including the Arctic berries native of Finland. And this is how the uh, fruit cells look like. What they produce from these simple ingredients are a host of beneficial micronutrients that can be eaten in a delicious form. Flavorful, brightly colored plant cells that have a textured, soft, or like pureed fruit and can be added to foods like yogurt and smoothies. They created a prototype in late 2016 under the name of Cell Pod. Um, their at-home bioreactor design is about the size of a table lamp and can produce about two cups of cell culture each week in a self-contained plastic bag. Plastic bag. Hashtag stop sucking, hashtag stop single use plastic. Users insert the bag which contains the cell starter, add water, and turn on the bioreactor. And after only two weeks, you will have two cups of cell gem. They also say in the article that when they first try, tried it, um, they were underwhelmed by the flavors, but then they figured out that if you just crush them, if you just crush these cells and you make it into a puree, then you are able to release the flavors and it tastes better. I really hope, and this is the guy who designed the cell, um, cell pod, I really hope that people get back to the center of food production. He designed the home bioreactor to help people feel more connected with their food. And so, right, <clears throat> this is the point where we start thinking. How does a uh, counter lamp that makes two cups of fruit puree, let's say, in two weeks, uh, make me feel more connected to nature and more connected to where food comes from. I really do not get it. Um, I applaud maybe the intention of wanting us to have access, as they say here in the article also, to those uh, um, foods, uh, and specifically berries for now, that have a lot of incredible nutrients and that, are, uh, that can be grown only in some parts of the world and only for a few months of the year. Um, and so with these, they want to give everybody access to these uh, very nutritious berries and fruits. So I understand that and I applaud that. I wonder, though, whether we need that. Uh, 
what's wrong with just eating what is local in the part of the world where you, where you live? What is wrong with eating the food that is grown where you live? And if you live in the Arctic, or if you live in the Amazon, or if you live in some extreme situation or place like in the desert where there's no fruit at all, and so you would very much appreciate having food from other parts of the world, I still don't think that this cellport is the <laughs> solution that you're going to look for. Um, so even though I kind of understand the, the, the reasoning behind it, I really ultimately do not understand the purpose of this thing and I, I don't know what benefit it can do to our life. I think of this thing as a bunch of plastic and materials and and uh, energy and electricity that is going to be on my countertop and it's going to give me fruit puree i don't i i i just think it as a waste of resources for me for my lifestyle i think that in this picture itself the plants that are around it those really make me connect with the food with food itself and with nature in fact, I mean, if you look around, there are nowadays so many resources that teach you how to grow your own food in your own kitchen counter, in your own garden. If you don't have a garden, you can grow stuff in your balcony. If you can, you can grow stuff just if you have a window where you can put um, the plants close by, close to the light. These type of things are the, this type of growing is the type of, uh, things that may bring us closer to our food and to nature i think uh, community gardens and uh, and uh, really going out there and touch the plants and see them living and growing uh whereas instead this plastic lamp i to, to me it doesn't do that it's it doesn't do that um and it, to me, and I think most of us also, I don't think that my body does really need that unique berry from the Arctic to be happy and healthy. So having said that, um, guys, let me know what you think, because I would be really interesting, interested in knowing if it's just me having this opinion, and, and I would be interested in knowing what is your opinion instead. And so we can start the discussion. So let me know in the comments below. And I hope this video was interesting uh, to, to you guys who are thinking about startups and kind of to kind of give you an idea <clears throat> about the sensitivity that we need to have, not just for the consumer who has been our priority in the design world for uh, now 30, 40 years, right? User center design, the user has, is always at the center of the, of the uh, project and the user has to have everything and needs to be happy and needs to be comfortable. Um, and, but we also need to remember that maybe it's not just the user that we need to be, make happy, but also the planet. Because if we make the, hap the planet happy, we ultimately make ourselves happy because we guarantee ourselves a home for many years and many centuries in the future. Let me know what you think. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to never miss one of my videos. I post them every one Monday, Wednesday and Friday. Thank you for watching this video. Have a lovely day and happy food design.